How does the setup of your car in ACC impact your performance? And do paid setups really make a difference? Or are they just a waste of money? Let's find out. So since the brand new 1.9 update came out in ACC just a few weeks ago, I've been spending a lot of time in this sim just trying to understand what's changed. And I can tell you now a lot has changed. The developers have done some really good work with the tire and suspension model. But today I wanna to look at how much of a difference does the setup of your car actually impact your performance. So today we're gonna to be doing two onboard tests with two different setups. We're going to be driving the Lamborghini Huracan GT3 Evo 2. We're going to be driving around Suzuka in the exact same conditions for each setup. Our first setup is going to be the default aggressive setup with no changes made to it. We're going to be using 13 litres of fuel. And then we're going to switch over to one of the brand new HiMo eSports setup for the Lamborghini. Same thing, 13 litres of fuel. And we're just going to see how things differ. Now before we start, I just want to say that this is in no way a paid or sponsored video. I purchased these HIMO setups with my own money and HIMO have in no way, shape or form dictated the way that this video was made. So let's jump in the rig and get started. Now look, it feels pretty stable through there. It's doing the S's quite nice too. It just feels a bit slow through there. Like it, it feels like the car is kind of getting bogged down just a little bit. Again, we've got to get the tyres warmed up. Just remember that in ACC now, you need to have your tyre pressures between 26.0 and 27.0. And when you qualify, you want to have them more down towards 26. Just so you can maximise the grip. Okay, does the hairpin okay? I felt that I had to brake pretty early though, to get the car stopped in time. Now it does spoon. Yeah, not, look, not too bad. There's just a little bit of understeer and I need to brake a bit more to correct that, but it's okay. It's a very stable drive. Which, I mean, if you want to sit there and do some decent lap times and enjoy the ride, I'd say that this is pretty good for you. And we're going to brake so much earlier. Wow. I'm just not used to braking that early. So we're going to have to brake in between the 100 meter board and the, and the board before that, teams. Let's see how we go now. Fire pressure's looking pretty good. Not bad, not bad. Yeah, it's really stable through these S's. That's good. It just gets bogged down in that corner a little bit. That's a bit of a lift there. I wasn't sure if I was going to make it. See how it does kink now. Yeah, it's okay. Not too bad. Down to TC2. Yeah, definitely having to break a little bit earlier in this setup. Doesn't like that hairpin. We've got one more lap after this. Not 
Not bad, that was pretty good on the exit. Okay, coming up to 130R now. Let's see how we go. Ooh, a little unstable on the 130R. Got it off track. See how we go with the last lap though. Okay, good exit. Let's just see what this lap was though real quick. We'll hug the inside for the faster lap time. Always hug the inside there on the exit. But it's not bad. It's a 2015. It's actually okay. Yeah, I just find that the car's getting a little bit bogged down in the S's here. But that being said, it's, it's still an okay drive though, that's the thing, like it, it feels good to drive, so it's fine. Not too bad. Like for a setup that you drive straight out of the box, you can get a pretty enjoyable experience out of this, it's not bad. Down to TC2. A bit better on the hairpin there. See how we go with Spoon. It does Spoon pretty good. Very stable. Easy to control. Yeah, that's good. I was able to get on the power pretty quick there. Yeah, nice exit. Okay, coming up to 130R. Yeah, it's like we almost need to downshift to fifth and then get back on the power, but I really don't want to have to do that because you shouldn't have to do that. That's the thing. Yeah, let's see how this one was. What do we got here? Okay, 2012. It's okay. Look, for a setup that is straight out of the box, it's pretty good. A 2012 is not a bad time on Suzuka at all. Especially if you're just getting into the game, it's really good. Alright, we'll jump back in the garage now. Okay, we'll spend this lap trying to get the tyres into the range. Let's get them heated up. Car feels really planted. One thing I'm noticing already is the force feedback when using this setup is a lot stronger. So if you're someone that doesn't really like to have as harsh force feedback coming through your wheel, you might have to turn your wheelbase settings down when using this kind of setup, or this setup in particular. I'm not sure if, we, if they're all like that. Yeah, a lot more force feedback coming to the wheel. Car feels a lot more heavier. Okay, it does the kink pretty good. Down to TC2. They're using TC4 in this setup, but I mean, that's, that's fine. The rule is we just need to go to TC2 for this corner and then go back up to whatever the default TC was for the setup. Okay, coming up to the spoon. That was really good. Turns well. Very smooth exit out of the spoon there. See how we go with 130R. Yeah, pretty good.
Yeah, that chicane feels really stable in this. Feel confident to take a lot of curve. All right, first lap. See how we do. We we'll had to do a bit of a lip there. That's one mistake. We just got to keep that in mind because I'm keen to see what the lap time is going to be like, even with all these mistakes that we make. So we've made this one mistake so far. Really good through that corner. Does well around the kinks. Going to TC2. Oh wow, that was so stable on exit. I was in TC2 and I could just put my foot down, it was fine. Okay, not too bad through there. Coming up to 130R now. Yeah, not bad. I made a mistake there as well. So we'll see how it turns out for us. Alright, so what are we looking at here? A 159.9 with all those mistakes. What? We absolutely screwed those corners up. And we still got a 159.9. That is insane. Now you can see why I was so surprised. Because when using the HIMO setup, even though I made that crucial mistake in Sector 1 on Suzuka, I still managed to do a lap time that was 1.3 seconds faster than when using the default aggressive setup. But what we'll do really quickly is jump into the track tight nap and just see how different the lap in the default aggressive setup was compared to the HIMO setup. So what we're looking at is an app called tracktitan.io. It's what I use to compare my lap times with each other so I can see where I'm gaining and losing time and hopefully improve. And now we're comparing our lap in the HIMO setup, which is in orange, to our default aggressive setup in blue. And at a glance, we can see that when using the HIMO setup, we're basically faster around the entirety of the track. Apart from segment one, where we made that big mistake in the first turn. Ignore segment 10, it's pretty much impossible to lose 2.4 seconds in the final chicane, unless you bring your car to a halt, which is definitely what we didn't do. The two segments that interest me the most though, are segment one and the hairpin at segment six. And we'll jump deeper into those segments and I'll explain why. Now looking at segment one, which comprises of turn one and turn two on the track, keep in mind that everything in orange is representing the HIMO setup and everything in blue is representing the default aggressive setup. When driving the HIMO setup, you'll see that we brake too early upon entering the corner. What this does is it compromises your entry into the corner and doesn't allow you to carry as much speed as you'd like. Making this mistake in turn one can cost you one to three tenths of a second on your lap time just from the first two corners alone. So the fact that we only lost eight hundredths of a second after completing the first two corners really interested me. And here's how it happened. Because the HIMO setup allows us to turn the car in a lot easier than the default aggressive setup. What this does is it enables us to get back on the throttle sooner which then lets us carry more exit speed out of the corner. As we approach the apex of turn two, you'll see that we get back on the throttle sooner in the HIMO setup. This gives us a better exit, and you'll see that at one stage, we're exiting the corner seven kilometers faster than the default aggressive setup. And that's where we gained all our time back. We then make a further mistake with the HIMO setup and have to lift on the exit. Now, if I had made these same two mistakes in the default aggressive setup, 
we probably would have lost at least three tenths of a second on our lap time compared to just eight hundredths of a second with the HIMO setup. Looking at the hairpin corner in segment six, you'll see that we gained two and a half tenths of a second, and this was down to one major factor. As we approach the hairpin, you'll see that I'm able to go on the brakes significantly later in the HIMO setup. And this is where all the time was gained. Braking later allows us to carry more speed into the corner. And you can see that as we approach the apex of the hairpin, at one stage in the HIMO setup, I'm traveling 10 kilometers faster than the default aggressive. Now I tried to replicate this braking spot in the default aggressive setup. And every time I attempted this, the tires would lock up and my car would lose control and slide forwards, ruining the lap. Then just like turns one and two, because the car turns in so well in the HIMO setup, I'm able to get back on the throttle earlier, which allowed me to carry a bit more speed on the exit. So looking back at what we just covered, this tells me two things about why a well-tuned setup is superior to the default aggressive. A well-tuned setup allows you to brake later, which results in carrying more speed into the corner. They then turn in easier, which allows you to get back on the throttle sooner, resulting in a faster exit speed. These two things combined result in an overall faster lap in all situations, which is why a well-tuned setup is superior to the default aggressive. There's one thing you need to keep in mind though. Think about car setups in ACC like a glass of water, where the size of the glass represents the potential pace of the car, and the water inside of the glass, the amount of driving skill required to drive it. The default setups in ACC are much easier to drive, but the potential pace that you can extract out of the car is far less than that of a well-tuned setup. That being said, a well-tuned setup requires a far greater driving skill in order to achieve that maximum amount of pace. Now that we've distinguished just how much of a difference a tweaked setup can make compared to just the default aggressive that comes out of the game, let's take a look at our options for achieving this goal. Now your first option is to make your own setups. Doing this is going to allow you to build a setup that's perfectly tailored for your driving style. The only issue with this is that you're looking at many, many hours of dedication, first learning how to build setups, and then figuring out how to build each setup for each track to suit your driving style. I've spoken to a lot of people that make their own setups, and they've all told me that they've spent hundreds of hours first learning how to make setups, understanding what to change to fix what's happening in the car, and then figuring out how to build each setup for each track. You're looking at a really big time investment here, but the output is gonna be something great because you're gonna be able to build a setup that's tuned perfectly for your driving style. There's a lot of fine tuning options available in the setup menu for your car and game. You can change things from the aero balance to your suspension to the angle of your wheels. It's all there for you to craft that perfect setup for your driving style. Now, if this is something that you'd like to try, I've got something that'll help you with this, which I'll show you later on in the video. When you're just starting out, I'd recommend starting off with the default aggressive setup and then making minor changes slowly to develop the setup that suits your needs. Free setups are another great option. There's a large variety out there and a simple YouTube search will show that. The only issue is that you might not be able to find what you're looking for in terms of car track combination or what's on offer might not suit your driving style. I'll leave a list of well-known free providers in the description for you below, so take a look at that after the video. You could also try asking your friends or people in your community that you know make setups, and they might be able to help you out too. Then you have paid setups. Now the advantage here is convenience. You're going to have a large variety at your disposal, and if you're purchasing from a well-known provider, you know that these are being made by exceptionally fast individuals who know what they're doing. There's a lot of services out there and I've tried quite a few of them, but I personally prefer the HIMO setups. The setups have direct integration with the Track Titan app. As we saw before, I'm able to see where I'm gaining time and losing time compared to a faster lap in an easy to understand manner, so that I can then apply this the next time I try and do the track to obtain faster lap times. Each bundle contains multiple setups for your car on each track, including qualifying as well as race setups. You've also got eSports and safer, easier to control variants of the qualifying and race setups. But the big question here is, do you need paid setups to be fast? No, absolutely not. 
So when we're talking about getting the best results possible out of the car in ACC, making your own setups is always going to be the superior option. Doing so is going to allow you to learn how to tweak the car to your unique driving style and allow you to extract maximum pace out of the car. But see, as good as that all sounds, the main problem here is that it just takes too long. I mean, I'm like you, I have a job, a family. I don't have time to dump hundreds if not thousands of hours into ACC just so I can go the fastest around the track. I just want to jump on the sim a few hours every night and just have fun with my friends and maybe crash into them a few times. But if this is the way you want to go, I've got something that might help you. My good friend over at WAPS Racing has made a comprehensive guide on how to make your own setups in ACC. It's a bit of a read, but if you take the time, you're going to have a pretty good understanding of what you need to change in the car to fix what issues you're experiencing while driving it. I'll leave it in the description down below, it's completely free, so take a look and let me know how you find it. And the main benefit that I see with paid setups is that I know I'm using a car setup that is designed to push the car to its limits. It all just falls down to me now to drive the car fast. So that pretty much sums it up. Today we found out that the setup of your car can have a massive impact on your pace around the track. But how you achieve that setup is up to you and what your priorities are. I really hope this video helped you out today. And if it did, consider hitting that subscribe button down there. It would really help me out. And remember, the setup of your car is nothing and everything. A good setup is going to give you the potential to extract the maximum pace out of the car, but it all falls down to you to be able to drive the car well enough to do that. That's all we've got time for today. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.